If you're watching this video right now, you're quite likely an information terrorist just by taking it into your head. Let me explain. This past May, Rand Paul, the senator from Kentucky who got beat up by his neighbor for being a dick or maybe because he has a haircut of an eight-year-old or whatever. Anyway, he did something that actually made a lot of sense. Before a vote to send another $40 billion to Ukraine, Paul demanded language that would create oversight for that money. Oversight. God forbid. Most of Congress was furious with him. Oversight? What, what, what do you think were some kind of functioning governmental body? Would you ask the mafia for oversight over kilos of cocaine that are hidden inside of slabs of beef? Uh, excuse me, Gino? I'm here to audit that beef slab there. No! Why are you asking for oversight over the largest mafia the world has ever seen? One of the people most upset with him was Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. As Scott Ritter writes for Consortium News, three weeks after Schumer forced that bill through and got the money for the proxy war in Ukraine, something funny happened. On July 14th, Andrei Shapovalov, a Ukrainian civil servant whose salary was paid for by U.S. taxpayer monies, convened a roundtable in Kiev on countering disinformation. He then published a list of names of 72 people whom he accused of deliberately spreading disinformation about Ukraine. He labeled them information terrorists, adding that Ukraine was preparing legislation so that such people could be prosecuted as war criminals. War criminals for printing something the Ukrainian government doesn't like? Well, that's fucking insane, but... At least it has nothing to do with the U.S., except for being partially funded by the U.S. But, you know, we, we, we send the money over there and they do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. I mean, the Pompushki meat and jelly dance off with your pants off was particularly unusual this year. But the U.S. government has no idea what happens with that money, right? Point being, the U.S. has nothing to do with this crazy roundtable thing. Except the roundtable was organized by the U.S. Civil Research and Development Fund, CRDF, Global Ukraine, an ostensible nonprofit organization authorized by U.S. Congress to promote international scientific and technical collaboration. It is supported by the U.S. State Department, some of whose officials sat in attendance. Wait a second. This committee was organized by the U.S. Civil R&D Fund and the State Department was there looking on like a proud parent at a kid's recital? Well, who exactly did they declare were information terrorists who should be prosecuted as war criminals? I assume it was just uh, crazy Ukrainians running through the streets, wiping their asses with Zelensky dolls. Ha ha! Look at that, motherfucker! Is that it? One of the people singled out by Shapovalov as an information terrorist targeted for criminal prosecution as a war criminal was none other than Rand Paul. Ah, Jesus Christ. Look, I hate Rand Paul for other reasons, like the fact he looks like the kid in elementary school who would rat you out for stealing the pipe cleaners out of the arts and crafts cupboard. But still, even so, he's being called a war criminal for trying to get some oversight of the billions of dollars sent to Ukrainian Nazis. But as former UN weapons inspector Scott Ritter notes, it gets even better. On May 31st, Diane Sayre, a LaRoche candidate challenging Schumer for his Senate seat in November, filed 66,000 signatures, well over the 45,000 required by law, with the New York State Board of Elections, thereby getting her name on the ballot. Diane Sayre. Where, where have I heard that name before? Oh, that's right. I haven't. No one has. Except Chuck Schumer, who's pissed she's running against him. But apparently, even though no one's heard of Diane Sayre, an obscure Ukrainian civil servant roundtable that makes lists of people they call information terrorists really has it out for her. That's right. Diane Sayre is on their list. This small-time candidate in New York is a war criminal for speaking the truth about Ukraine. Do you think perhaps Chuck Schumer might have had some say on that list? 
I wouldn't be surprised to see his wife's high school boyfriend on there. Ooh, he thinks he's so cool just because he played varsity basketball and he still has all his hair. Yeah. Well, let's see how he likes rotting in a Ukrainian prison for war crimes, pissing in a bucket, and eating leftover meat jelly for this year's dance off with your pants off. Every last American should be repulsed at the idea of people being labeled terrorists or war criminals for standing up to U.S. propaganda about the proxy war in Ukraine. But beyond just that, we should be even more disgusted by the Senate Majority Leader using taxpayer money to seemingly go after political opponents. Plus, who is the U.S. or our proxy government in Ukraine to tell people what is and is not the truth? That's like Fred Durst telling you what is and is not good music. The U.S. government has admitted that in a break with the past, they're using intel to fight an info war with Russia, even when the intel isn't rock solid or isn't real at all. They've admitted they're lying to you. And since our corporate media parrots everything coming out of the White House and the Pentagon, they're lying to you too. Man, I guess that makes them information terrorists. I guess that makes Wolf Blitzer a war criminal. And all this time, I thought he was just a hairy douche. That's it for now, but there's two new episodes of The Most Censored News every week, and this show is completely independently funded by people like you. We have no sponsors, no corporate media overlords. If you want to see this show, keep going. Become a member on Patreon. Don't forget to click subscribe. Thank you. Keep fighting.